Good Mental Health. I'm your host, Matt Kelly. I'm pleased to have your company as we enjoy another in our series of podcasts that examine the tweets of our behavior expert and solutions-focused life coach, Dr. Neil Marinello. We began our series with, I am the most important person in the world to me. We continued with, there is no part of you that is not a part of me. Each of us lives in our own reality. None of us is better than anyone else. And each of us is doing the best we can with what we have. Our topic for today's discussion is the only rules controlling me are my own. And I'm pleased to be joined on our podcast by our expert, Dr. Neil Marinello. Neil, it's always a pleasure to see you here by Zoom and to welcome you to the show. I'm enjoying it too, Matt. Wonderful. So our, our topic for today's discussion, again, is the only rules controlling me are my own. Give us a snapshot of what the theory behind this tweet is and try to uh, you know, put it into everyday practice for all of us. Uh, yeah, well, it, it begins with just the fact that I'm the only person who has to live with myself 24 seven. And uh, that's true with just about everybody. Uh, uh, so I need to set my own rules uh, and I have the rules I have to set up are ones that work for me, uh, even if they don't necessarily work for anybody else. Uh, for me, the most important rule is don't hurt anyone unnecessarily. Uh, but obviously I have other rules. Uh, uh, the, the, there's a variety of way of looking at it. Uh, uh, I start with the fact that rules are necessary. Mm. Uh, uh, every country, every company, every uh, business, every job, uh, every profession uh, needs rules. And in the mental health biz, which is what I've been in for a long time, uh, the rules are called ethical guidelines. Uh, the, uh, Can you, I apologize. Can you say that one more time? Ethical guidelines. Okay. Uh, in other words, um, the, the operative word there is ethical. Uh, 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 but ethical has one meaning and guidelines has another. The simple re reality is that no rule applies to all situations. Uh, ethics is what other people tell me I should do in a situation <laughs> they've never been in before. Mm. Uh, the moral thing to do uh, for me is the best thing I can do uh, in order to feel okay about myself. Uh, it's the right thing to do in the situation I'm in at the moment. Uh, now, uh, I grew up in a uh, uh, in, in environment in which both my parents were uh, Columbia Law School graduates. Uh, it took me a while to understand uh, the sort of things that my mother was saying to me. But one of the things that she uh, believed is that rules are made to be broken. Hmm. And that took me quite a while to understand what she meant by that. Uh, I follow the rules. That's my general thing. I don't, uh, I don't like disobeying rules. Uh, but if I find myself in a situation which I, uh, which I think only I can make better by breaking the rules uh, in order to keep people from being hurt, uh, then I do my best to do the right thing, but I, of course, have to take the consequences. Mm. Uh, when I was practicing as a psychologist, there were a few times I got into trouble for doing what I considered to be the moral thing rather than what the guidelines said was the ethical thing. Mm. Uh, there was the time that uh, uh, my license to practice as a psychologist was uh, suspended for four months because I had to break the rules in order to keep three people from being killed. Mm. Uh, then there was the time I was targeted by a dangerous, crazy lady in an attempt to shake down my insurance company. Uh, the simple reality is that, uh, that there are times when every rule uh, can and should be broken, but uh, when in doubt, the best bet is to follow the rule. So again, our topic here is that the only rules that are, are governing me are my own. And yet here in uh, you know, the beginning of our conversation, you had stated that every country, every state, every city, every business has rules. So 
aren't those rules governing us as well? Or are what you saying, it is still my rule whether I follow those rules? Is that what you're meaning? Well, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, sometimes the rules are what we call laws. Right. And, uh, and laws are definitely uh, uh, to be followed. Uh, uh, but there are, uh, like with all rules, there are times when following those, uh, those laws may in fact create a conflict, a conflict for the person who's in that position. Uh, and so where I'm coming from, I guess, is that uh, uh, when in doubt, follow the rules, follow the laws. Mm. Uh, but there are times that the exception comes up. Uh, we have uh, to understand that, that truth is a variable that what is true today is not what was true 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, laws, rules are variable. It's possible to, uh, to do marijuana now. It wasn't a while ago. Right. Uh, the, the things that were acceptable. Uh, I recently watched uh, uh, a movie, uh, My Fair Lady, which uh, won the, um, uh, the Oscar, I believe, in the early 1960s. Uh, it was almost impossible to, to tolerate. There were so many things in that uh, uh, in, in that remake of Pygmalion uh, that were in fact uh, 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 revolting to anybody who's grown up recently. Uh, so we have to take into account the fact that uh, that all rules are uh, uh, are temporary mm. and, uh, and that they exist and they exist to be followed. Uh, if you take professions, for example, one thing that very few people understand is that uh, in order to protect itself, every profession has as its first ethical guideline uh, something that isn't actually written there, which is make sure that you don't get in trouble with the other people in the profession. Uh, hmm. The reality is that, uh, that the first rule should always be protect your client, do the best you can not to hurt people. Uh, but if you look at the at the uh, the practical reality of the practice of any profession, uh, the first rule is always uh, don't get the other guys in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, as I you know kind of examine this a little bit more, I I would think that this could be a, a an area of contention for society that if each individual believed that the only rules governing their behavior were their own, that society as a, as a whole may be, may feel threatened by that. And particularly even those maybe in power may feel threatened by someone who doesn't believe a certain convention and acts as his own will uh, affords. Well, that's why I think that the, uh, the basic concept of you can swing your arm anywhere you want as long as you don't hit anybody. Mm. Applies. Mm. Uh, I mean, take it. Take that. Uh, uh, take the idea of libertarianism, for example. Uh, that whole concept uh, uh, says that the rules that the country uh, puts on us is not are not rules which uh, which necessarily apply to me. Mm. On the other hand, if what I'm doing is causing harm to other people or even to myself. Uh, then uh, you have to take into account the reality that, that that's, uh, uh, that's affecting other people. Mm. Society has to set up certain rules. They're, uh, they're, uh, without that, you wind up with, uh, with anarchy and uh, every experiment that I've seen about that uh, uh, doesn't seem to work, uh, even the really good uh, TV shows. Well, and even, you know, as you say, you know, all rules are made to to be broken, I would think that even um, society breaks its own rules. For example, thou shalt not kill, and yet capital punishment is still uh, practiced in some states uh, here uh, in the 21st century. Well, exactly. And that thou shalt not kill is a, uh, a rule that was set up by God, supposedly, in the, uh, uh, in the Bible. Uh, but any one of the commandments, every one of the commandments uh, has an exception. There are circumstances in which obviously uh, if someone is uh, about to, uh, to kill my wife, I might, and I have the opportunity to stop that person, 
uh, I would have to consider it. Although I would have to say that in my particular case, I don't believe in any form of physical violence at any time. Mm. Uh, in practice, I actually had that happen at one time. Uh, someone pulled out a, pulled a gun out on me and uh, looked like they were going to shoot me. Wow. And, uh, and what I said to that person was, uh, you can kill me, but uh, after I'm dead, I'm still going to haunt you. <laughs> it was enough to stop him. I have no uh, uh, doubt about that uh, that theory right there. What I what I like about this concept here again that the only rules controlling me are my own. It to me it dovetails right back with you know some of the uh, topics of our of our uh, podcast series, particularly beginning the first one, which is um, I am the most important person in the world to me, and those two to me almost seem to be you know, parallel or intersecting uh, along a certain line? Well, I don't think it's possible to take yourself into account without your context. In other words, we all exist uh, in a social uh, situation and an argument can be made that the only way to really define yourself is through your relationships. Mm. Uh, that's one reason why uh, uh, <clears throat> some uh, movies and books have made a big deal out of someone who's left all by themselves. Uh, sometimes when a person comes to me and they are uh, in a state of depression in, uh, and, and dealing with the feeling of, uh, uh, of anomi, of being totally alone, uh, I've been known to give them an assignment. And the assignment is assume that the, uh, the neutron bomb has dropped. And uh, the neutron bomb is the one that kills all the people. And, uh, uh, and for some reason, you're still alive. Uh, what are you going to do? Mm. Are you going to spend your time? Yeah. Uh, you, know, you may or may not know whether there are other people alive. Are you going to look for them? Uh, one person once said, well, I'm going to kill myself. I said, well, how? Let's go into detail. And, uh, uh, and after they had written it up for a while, they decided, well, maybe let it go for a while. Uh, it's an... Uh, it's very difficult to say the only person that matters to me is me and the only rules that matter are the rules that I make myself without taking uh, your relationships into context and, uh, uh, and somehow being aware of the fact that, uh, that you can't define yourself without taking other people into context. And again, it, to me, it just feels like it uh, dovetails with uh, our third topic, which is, again, each of us lives in our own reality. And it is these rules, uh, internal rules that govern that reality. And those internal rules nearly all come from external sources. Mm. In other words, we grow up and we're being told by these uh, giants who we see as gods, uh, uh, what their rules are. And uh, uh, we tend to buy them totally and accept them mm. until we find out that, uh, uh, that uh, in this particular situation, that's not true. Uh, you know, whether you start with Santa Claus, uh, which is uh, uh, the know, Easter Bunny, <laughs> yeah, or any of those things. Uh, they, they, I, I remember uh, because I was virtually two years younger than everybody else in my class and skipped a couple of grades. I was sitting in the fourth grade class with people that were two years older than me, and the teacher mentioned in passing there wasn't any Santa Claus. Uh, I had to gulp back my tears. Oh, yeah. Uh, look cool though, didn't show it to anybody. Right, At least I right. thought I did. Yeah. Uh, in the interest of uh, full disclosure, I've been a client uh, of Dr. Neal's uh, off and on over the past 25 years. It's been that long, Neil. Um, mm -hmm. And what I found very interesting is that you've actually uh, shared that neutron bomb story with me when we've been actually in consultation. And I may have been that one who said uh, that I would kill myself. So uh, when you bring it back here today, it uh, certainly brought back uh, many of the uh, times that we've been in consultation before. I wasn't actually thinking about you. I was thinking about somebody else, but uh, uh, it definitely you're not the only one that has said that. Mm. Uh, in one case, I, re I remember taking a person, you know, to they said, well, I'll, uh, uh, I'll go to a drugstore and I'll help myself to the drugs because there aren't any people there. I said, OK, what drugs are you going to take? Mm. And we carried it all the way through uh, to the point where the person was trying to decide whether to uh, swallow the drugs and how much to take. 
and then decided, well, I'll wait for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. and doesn't mean that that's what everybody would do in that situation, but when you actually uh, have to face the fact that uh, uh, you're about to end the only thing that you know, which is life, uh, sometimes you have second thoughts. Mm. In your particular case, you didn't when you held the gun to your heart and pulled the trigger. On the other hand, I think that now you're happy that you didn't succeed. Yeah. And I will say that, you know, I still suffer from mental health issues. Uh, there are times when uh, I'm feeling low and that is an easy way out and, and the thought of it is still present. So uh, as much as I've come through this incredible experience, uh, certainly traumatic, uh, I don't think I'm out of the woods yet. I'm certainly much better than I was before. And you and I are in constant communication, whereas during that time we weren't. So I know that you're on my team to help me interpret correctly the messages I might be receiving. Uh, that's well said, Matt. The, the, the truth is that uh, uh, I tell, uh, I've never fired a client and I tell all of my clients that uh, I'm available um, uh, during the times that I'm awake, which is basically 3.30 in the morning until eight at night. And anybody that calls me during that time uh, will get me. Mm. Uh, and what they will get will be uh, uh, the best me that I can present to them at that particular moment in time. Well, and, and just to share on that, I mean, just this past weekend, you and I were in communication over, a, again, an issue I've had with my uh, neighbor who feels disrespectful to uh, what is in essence a uh, quiet ordinance in the city as well as in their lease and how much it impacts my mental health and my physical health by, you know, disturbing rest uh, anywhere from 10 to 7 in the morning. So, yeah, I think that the the operative question that uh, that I have to answer, and it's not that uh, uh, I'm holding myself up as a totally mentally healthy person. I have bad times too, as everybody does. Uh, but the question that I ask myself is, uh, is there anything I can do right now that will help me feel even just a little bit better about myself without hurting anybody? And can you say that again? I think that's just really, really important and just a crux to getting over an incident that may be troublesome. Yeah, the question that I ask myself and that I suggest that others ask themselves is, is there anything I can do right now that will help me feel even just a little bit better about myself without hurting anybody? Mm. And of course, I'm included in the anybody. <laughs> That's so powerful. We are uh, enjoying our uh, podcast series with our behavior expert and solutions focused life coach, Dr. Neil Marinello. We're examining his tweets in depth as part of this series. You can al always follow Dr. Neil directly on Twitter at Coach Dr. Neil. So Neil, give us a, a final wrap up here on this theory. The only rules controlling me are my own. Well, I think that it's, uh, it seems simple, but it actually is a little more complex than it, uh, than it originally appears. Uh, for example, um, uh, I've it, probably the, the most difficult uh, kind of client to work with is an addict. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've spent a lot of time talking to addicts, uh, doing what I could to help them. Uh, at one point, uh, and I don't totally dismiss this now, I decided that an addict is somebody who can't follow their own rules. Mm -hmm. uh, you share yeah. that with me again for disclosure, yeah. I believe, and we've even shared this and talked about it, I have an addictive personality or have exhibited addictive behavior. Mm -hmm. Me too. And, uh, and when I set rules, uh, nowadays my rules mostly have to do with food, but when I set rules for myself and I find that I'm not following them, I have to look in the mirror and say, okay, Neil, you know, what are you going to do about that? I can't uh, be an ostrich. I can't hide my head in the sand, although I understand ostriches don't actually hide their heads in the sand. It's just a, a, a good metaphor. Uh, uh, but you also have this, this issue of can't uh, versus won't. And when you come to rules, you have to deal with what many people refer to as willpower. Mm. Uh, my own belief is that uh, uh, 
that it should be called won't power. It has a lot, <laughs> has a lot more to do with what you're not allowed to do than what you are allowed to do. Mm. Uh, and the word can't is also a difficult word because uh, uh, the truth is that, uh, that uh, no matter how hard you try, you can't fly. Mm. Uh, you can follow your own rules, uh, especially if there's a, an appropriate uh, uh, motivation for it. Uh, even most addicts could follow their own rules if at the end of the day they had a million dollars coming to them. Uh, but the simple reality is that, uh, that understanding the normal um, uh, concept of you have to live with yourself, you have to make rules that work for you, you have to look in the mirror when it looks like you're not following those rules, uh, that's the basis for uh, having good mental health without kidding yourself. Mm. And it feels like that the statement requires an inner strength or a self-realization in a sense that perhaps the everyday general public going about their business certainly doesn't have in the forefront of their mind, right? Well, uh, one thing that most people don't seem to accept is that most of life is muddling. Mm. That you basically are just going from one situation to another and trying to keep from, uh, from screwing up. And again, that is what our, our previous uh, episode was about. Everyone's doing the best they can with yeah. what they have to get yeah. from one situation to the next. Right. So the reality here is, is very simple, which is that uh, uh, you want to get from one situation to another as well as you can without getting yourself in trouble, without getting other people in trouble. Uh, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that, uh, that the more you can take care of yourself, the more you can be on top of what's called your ADLs, your activities of daily living. Uh, I basically get up at the same time every morning, do the same things every morning, uh, make sure I take the right pills at the right time, try to eat this, the same sort of things that work for me. Uh, that's what works best for me. It may or may not be what works best for others. Mm. But the key to being able to, uh, to be happy is to know that you got your act more together now than you did a, a month ago. And hopefully you'll have your act more together a month from now than you do now. Yeah. Yeah, and it feels again that the one of the uh, concepts really at the uh, crux of this statement is free will. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and I think that uh, that free will is is argued among the philosophers, but the simple reality of that is uh, uh, you can accomplish anything if you're single-minded, if your intent. Is, uh, is one which works for you and, for, and doesn't hurt other people. So deciding on, uh, on what my goal is may be the single most important thing that I have to do at any given moment in time. And anybody who says that it's possible to do two things at the same time is on some level exaggerating. It is possible to, be, to multitask, but it's not possible to uh, to multitask in a way that gets each job done perfectly. Well, uh, yeah, and that's my it, definition it, is my it, definition of multitasking is doing several things at once poorly. Yes. <laughs> well, the simple reality is that you have to uh, uh, you have to accept that the most important concept in mental health is what I call the good enough concept. The, uh, you don't have to do it perfectly. You just have to do it in a good enough way. Mm. And uh, uh, if you can get that job done in a good enough way and do that, do two or three other jobs at the same time, fine. You know, but it doesn't change the, the fact that, uh, uh, that setting a goal for yourself, focusing on that goal, working towards achieving that goal uh, is the single best way to make up rules that work. We've been speaking with Dr. Neil Marinello, examining his tweets, uh, and uh, as part of our series here, Good Mental Health, my special thanks to the good doctor, a reminder that you can always follow him directly on Twitter, at Coach Dr. Neil. We'll be back again next week with another episode, and for the good doctor, I'm Matt Kelly, wishing you good mental health.